I mean, it's at least rolling down the wire. That's the first good step. And this is some super fine wire, too. <laughs> and those sharp turns uh, is a mess. If something has to do with the code, something happened in the code. Alright. Well, for a first test, I mean, it's not horrific. That is some super fine wire. I should be testing with a little bit bigger wire anyway. Some of this overlap is because of how I got it started. I messed it up. Well, that's success, but yeah, a lot of work to do. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. My name's Russ with RWGResearch.com. And this is a coil winding update video. So I've made a lot of coils. This particular coil is going to be talking about the version 2 uh, motorized tool end. And we're going to be talking about the coils I've been making. So spiral coils primarily is all I've been messing with. Um, my goal is to be able to create complex geometries, but that is a lot of extra work. Spirals are pretty easy because you can manipulate the G-code depending on how you've got the G-code set up. So that's what we've been doing, just to test functionality, test precision, just work on the details and find out like what's possible, what's not possible with just doing circles, and in this case, spirals. So in this video, it's going to be slightly a long video because I'm going to describe to you a lot of different things, a lot of the problems I'm having, a lot of the successes I'm having, some of the different type of um, ways that I've been able to make these different coils. Here I've got just packing tape on both sides. So I'm going to go over those details the best I can and uh, hopefully you know you'll learn something. So I've been using the vacuum bed. I originally had the wooden frame around the outside and then I would take packing tape place it across the bottom and then put that on there, screw it on there and then use it just like that. With the vacuum bed it helped hold those edges down but what I realized is when you had the edges touching each other or slightly overlapped the tape would want to buckle up. All sorts of bad things were happening. So I tried the uh, different types of tape and ended up actually using shipping labels. So here is a this one's already gone. So this is just a white shipping label. All right, it happens to be half sheets. You can get these in full sheets and make even bigger coils. Half sheets fit exactly what I want on them. Um, I did try uh, vinyl, you know, like a sticky back vinyl. I tried clear shipping labels. Um, I tried a few other things, but that was primarily, this was just working out so well. Now this works well with small wire. Everything in this video is 40, between 36 and 50 AWG wire that I've been messing with. So it works really well. But when you go up to the bigger sized wire, you actually need a more tacky surface, is what I'm learning. So depending on the wire, depending on what you're using, everything changes. So let me get you some close-ups. I have the entire room filled with coils, um, and I'm going to just basically start showing you all of these different coils. I mean, look at all these things. We've got a lot to talk about. I've uh, made a few coils. <laughs> So here we've got um, some basic coils and this is basically 120 millimeters in diameter and these coils are um, 10 millimeters inside. Let me set the tripod up so this is a That's little That's better. Okay, so here we've got different things, all right? We've got packing tape only. Uh, this, this is actually a, a, a clear shipping label. Um, you can see or not a shipping label, but just a clear uh, printable label. You can see it's one solid piece, but the top has the tape on it. So to finish these coils, um, I've just been putting tape on top. So here we get to the uh, the packing shipping label. Now this is paper, so that's the only bad thing. It's not really perfect for what I want, but it does work. And then the front, I just put tape across there. And then this one here is like a clear shipping label that I put um, on top of the paper label. So this actually works pretty well also. So this uh, this hasn't gone without failure, as you can see. I've uh, I failed quite a few times. Um, really, this is most of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like maybe twelve coils that just completely just 
disastrous. And some of it was that the uh, the roller was actually pushing too hard and starting to peel the back off of the paper. The plastic uh, tape, as you can see here, I've got a lot of plastic tape ones. I was just having a lot of problems with that. I really need a flat sheet, a flat surface to put on the uh, the vacuum bed here. That works really well. My vacuum has been getting some good run time. I need to figure out to use a, a different sort of vacuum system for that. But for now, that's pretty good. So this is the way I tried this originally. Now, what you'll notice, um, so let's actually take these over to the light so you can see inside the coil when I hold it up to the light. All right, this is gonna be kind of hard to see with these clear ones. So when you get to the paper ones, it'll be a lot better. But you can see how um, inconsistent this, uh, this print was. This was one of the very first ones that succeeded. And you can totally see that it's not very good. So if we move on to uh, this one, who, which has the, um, the thicker uh, printable label, it has really thick, sticky uh, stuff on it. And what it is is it kind of pushes the wire around kind of funky. You can see how it rolled it. You see how it actually created these weird ripples in there. And so that's, again, not real helpful. Um, so eventually we started getting it uh, tuned in. Here's a paper one, you can see how much better it is. Well, actually, now I need to take that off. Yeah, let me show you some of these other ones first. So here's a, here's another one. It looks better, but you can see it got a little funny on the inside there. But the edge is, uh, the edge is pretty consistent. So we'll move on. Here's a paper tape one. You can see it's better, but still not as good. Now I'm going to have to take this off. Don't look into the light. It'll blind you. There we go. Much better. So you can see how that, uh, you can see how kind of just the wire lays down. That's important because we want consistency. Um, here's that one on that paperback. You can kind of see how the, the edges are solid and the inside starts being less solid. That's how we've got it programmed. Now you can see it's not perfectly round. You've got this right here and this is why I stopped it because it started overlapping. You can see it's almost perfectly consistent there. Here we've got some like spaces. So these are all the, the little details I've been trying to work out. That one is a lot better, but still not perfect. So as I tried getting my tolerance tighter and tighter and tighter, um, stuff like this, you can see how kind of weird that it really looks. I'll hold it up to the light here in a second. You can see how these are not even like spaced right. It kind of has this weird oscillation. Um, I'm not 100% sure why some of these did that. These were in the beginning. Maybe the roller system I had wasn't quite as good. And then you get to like these, where the wire, I'm spacing it out. I'm only changing the spacing between the wire. By the way, this is, uh, most all this stuff is uh, either 43 or 40 AWG. So this, you know, the spacing between these wires to get them perfectly consistent is actually a bit of a challenge and I've actually just got to manipulate the uh, tool path um, using Fusion 360 to generate this spiral tool path and I've actually got to manipulate it like 0.05 or yeah 0 0.005 millimeter every single time to get it right so um, some of these are 0 0.095 tool paths some of these are 0.1 tool paths some of these are 0 0.105 and so on and so to get it just right takes a little bit of time. What I've noticed is um, when you get the wire like perfect, that you start getting this, this overlap. Here you can really, really see it on this one. So let's go look at this one on the light, in the light, and you can see the difference between this side of the coil and this side of the coil. Don't look into the light. All right. So it's kind of hard to see. This light isn't super bright. But you can see here where it started uh, pushing out the edge. It's like really consistent, and over here on the other side, it's not nearly as consistent. You can see it's even better on the, on this one. You can actually see how the consistency of the coil is. You can just see how not perfectly placed they are. And here it's like I don't have any more room between these wires, and eventually, if it lays down perfectly, it starts getting off. Now these aren't overlapped, but for whatever reason, this started out differently. And uh, this is just, you know, the result that we get whenever things don't quite work out right. So you're better off leaving a sm tiny small gap and not having this happen. All right, so this one here is about uh, as good as it gets without having problems. Um, 
I've had some a little better than this, but this is pretty consistent. Now the edge, you can see how the edge is actually closer than the rest. That is actually just due to the tool path. That is how I've got the tool path set up. Um, the way Fusion spits out, it's trying to cut the edge, right? So you gotta go in there and remove that G-code to really make it uh, not have that. Same thing on the very inside. But I made a bunch of these repetitively and these actually turned out really nice. And you, if you get it too much closer than this, you start getting those problems I just showed you. You can see down here, it's actually pretty well perfectly spaced. Up here, it's not quite perfectly laid. That has to do with the roller, the sticky, the tape, how it comes off. There's a bunch of different things, how the motor is being controlled. I mean, there's a bunch of variables in there. Um, you know, this is point to point to point to point going in a circle. And so the vector, you know, the direction that it's traveling is in that short straight and not necessarily an arc. And so that also creates some of these, uh, some of these issues that you see here as well. So those we'll talk about in a second. Those right there, I can't even measure the wire diameter. It is so hard. It's somewhere between 57, uh, I'm sorry, 47 and 50 AWG, somewhere between that. So I'll show you those in a second. But I just wanted to kind of pan over, you know, these different coils that I've constructed. And uh, it's a bit crazy how many I've actually made, but you know, trial and error R&D, right? That's what you gotta do. So I'm going to show you a couple coils that I purposefully spaced with, with too much space because it's uh, you can actually almost see the consistency better when they're spaced apart. So let me show you. All right, the first one we're looking at here, this one is um, pretty well too tight. You can see how this edge is like perfect. These actually look really, really well, but you start getting this error where it starts uh, laying wire over too far. So that one is a bit too tight. Uh, this one is basically about right. It's kind of the same one I just showed you. It has a little bit of inconsistencies, so it looks, but it's hard to tell. But you can finish a coil from, you know, from the beginning to the end uh, repetitively, and you know it's going to be successful. This one I've spaced, uh, let's see, 0.2 millimeter apart. Now, you can't even see the inconsistencies anymore, so I'm actually going to have to zoom in so you can really see the wire. So you can really see what that looks like. Um, it's fairly darn consistent. And like I said, I think there's something to do with how the roller pushes against the tape and how the wire comes off, depending on the spaces that you have. So that's 0.2 millimeter. This one here is uh, 0.5 millimeter. And man, does it look good. I mean, you almost can't see the wire on there. It's kind of crazy, to be honest. So you can see the... Uh, can see the consistencies it's it looks really nice I just cannot complain whatsoever on how well the wire lays down when you have a, a space like that so it almost it doesn't work better but it just I don't know it does lay down a really good path when you've got a little space in there I think it has something to do with the roller contact against the tape and where the wires actually being placed uh, because I think what's happening on some of the other ones is the wire is actually coming off of the roller in the right spot, but then there's not enough down pressure to hold it in place and it gets pulled in. I think that's why we're seeing the type of inconsistencies that we're seeing right there. Well, I had this finished, this whole video was done, and then I realized I found some smaller wire. You, you see this uh, wire in my hand? You can barely see it. That's 50. So I realized I actually have some 50 AWG, and so I made a coil out of it, so let me show you. But before we do that, let me remind you of the 56 AWG I have. It's written there on the side. 56 Poly, S Poly. Um, it's a tangled mess, so it's it's useless, but uh, it is really cool. This had uh, 5 feet of .001, which is actually about 50 AWG, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's useless. So I actually sent this to a guy overseas, and I forgot his name, I apologize if you're watching, and he was going to try to use it, but it's just such a tangled mess, it's just insanity, and he actually, in return for me doing that, sent me a roll of 50 AWG from MWS wire. So that's the, the, the spool I forgot I had, so let me show you. Alright, so it's a little uh, difficult to get this uh, figured out here, but I put some more wires on my tape, I wanted to show you what they look like. So on the far left, we have 30 AWG, and then we have 40, right? So from left to right. So far left, 30 gauge. Next is 40. The next one is 42. The next one is 40, 
7.5. The next one is 50. The next one is actually 56 AWG. And the far right is actually my wife's hair. <laughs> She's got some coarse hair apparently, but yeah. It's actually bigger than the 40, so everything below the 30 is smaller than a human hair, which is just insanity. So the one right above the two there on the left side of the two is actually the one that uh, I have actually was able to wrap on the coil winder. Yeah, uh, quite mind-boggling, but there you go. Some of you have never even seen wire as small as the 50 or the 56, but there they are on a piece of tape under a microscope. I don't know what the zoom is on this. It's not very much, but yeah, that's crazy. Well, there they are without the microscope. You can see the one on the right side of the uh, two next to my wife's hair. That's the 56 AWG. You almost can't see it. I wish I had more to that, but it's a bit tangled, so... Yeah, well. Alright, there it is. It's a 50 AWG epoxy bond, which is even more awesome. And it actually has about uh, 66 grams on it, which equates to about 47,000 feet. It's pretty crazy. And there is the uh, finished coil. Uh, I'm going to take it off here and measure the resistance. It looks like it didn't have any overlaps all the way until it got to the middle. Now I put a different roller on it and I offset the roller just a little so it didn't stick to the tape because I was having problems with the tape peeling up. The paper tape was pulling off onto the roller because it was touching it. So I offset it to make it work. Um, this is 0.0 zero four five no point zero four five millimeter forty five micron tool path um, I could probably go smaller there's room for it so let's uh, finish it take it off and I want to show you the resistance of this thing which is insanity so there's the 50 AWG in the light I got the light behind it I mean you really can't tell a whole lot what's going on it looks pretty good though it ain't perfect but <laughs> for what it is and what I made it on it's exceptional all right, so I started a wire to this little guy and put some lamination over the top. <clears throat> it's actually a piece of vinyl. It's not perfect, but let's find out. How many ohms is this coil, can you guess? There we go. Huh, I already wrote it on the paper. Come on, guys, here we go. Do 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 do. 9.5 K. Was it 9.51? Now it's at 9.5. That is insane. That is uh, about 120 millimeter outside diameter and about 15 millimeter inside diameter. 50 AWG, 9.5 kilo ohms in that one coil. That's crazy. All right, so there they are. This is the ultra fine wire. Um, it is insanely small. This is, um, I mean, you almost can't hear the uh, the surface. It's so fine. It's it's incredibly fine. Um, the distance that I've set the tool path between each one of these wires is 35 microns. So that's pretty darn impressive. That was the first one, I think. Here's one with a little bit more spacing on it. You can see what it looks like. It has a little bit more spacing. And again, when you add a little bit more spacing, it seems like the wire lays down better. So let me show you what these look like in the light. Okay, so it's actually a bit hard to see, but this is what the um, this is what it looks like under there. So this is the uh, very fine wire, somewhere just under 50 AWG probably. So hard to measure. And here is the uh, here is the one that is spaced a little bit more farther apart. And you can see just how much more consistent it seems. Um, in fact, it's uh, you can't even see how small that wire is. It's incre <laughs> it's incredibly small. So I'm gonna hold this up to a uh, a 40 a 40 AWG so you can see the difference. See how much thicker uh, thicker the 40 AWG is versus. You can kind of see the difference. Uh, it's like super super freaking fine wire. It's pretty amazing that it even works. So this is the. Uh, the 30 AWG under the microscope and you can see how this particular tape uh, doesn't really stick very well with big wire and so you can see sort of the inconsistencies especially once you get towards the middle it gets a little wonky but 
Yep, it'll work better, I think, if I had a better sticky tape. Plus, the wire needs to be straightened before it goes in. All right, so this is the 47.5, and I'm trying to just show you some of the little glitches and errors that you can get that uh, you can hardly even see, but it looks like it got overlapped. So the wire spacing here is 0 0.045 millimeter or 45 microns. And uh, if we go out towards the outside here, you can probably really see how, uh, how messy it kind of looks. You can see it's overlapped and all kinds of weird things. Now there are times whenever it lays perfect, almost exactly side by side, but then you get these, uh, you get these errors in here as well every once in a while. And so what I did is I spaced everything out 50 microns. So I moved it 0 .005 of a millimeter, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here it is. This is um, a 47 and a half AWG, and the whole entire coil looks really exceptional all the way out to the edge. There are like tiny little. Uh, tiny little extra spaces in there now and again I think that has to do with trying to get the wire straight before it lays down as well now all the way towards the inside we get a few uh, a few small errors in here as you can see and there's one and there's a few and I think that has to do with just how things are when they get this small there's one a little bit out but this is only a 10 millimeter inside diameter so I got some if I really wanted to run wire this small, I'd have to really get things dialed in and figure out how to get the roller to lay it a little proper. But yeah, in general, this coil looks great. Can't really complain. Alright, I'm having a hard time holding everything steady, but here is uh, here's what the 50 AWG looks like under the microscope. I'll say it looks really good. There's some gaps in there. I got room for play. I can still make fine adjustments and get it even tighter. So here is a good 40 AWG. You can see the wire is uh, is not bad. There's some spaces here and there, but like I said, what I've learned is that it actually is better to have a little bit of a space and not have that uh, not have that overlap happen because then it really gets a little messy. But yeah, this this looks uh, really well in my eyes. All right, so here on the table we have the difference between 30. 40 and 47.5 so it's pretty uh, dramatic this tape like I said doesn't stick very well for the 30 um, it works really good for the 40 works really good uh, for the even smaller 47 and a half but yeah very very clean very nice coil um, this one really did turn out nice it looks exceptional exceptional this one did too this one I still got some tuning to do and actually believe it or not the wire not being straight is what causes a lot of the problems so I could get the tolerances even tighter if the wire was straighter so I've tried to sort of straighten the wire by running it through a uh, little uh, styrofoam um, or like a uh, what is that called a foam padding type thing like a sponge um, a really soft like sponge type material and that works pretty good maybe I can use some felt pads or something but yeah, I gotta be careful because I can't hold that much tension on the wire. So that's also part of the problem. I need it to be loosely coming off the roll. So I'm gonna have to figure that out in another video. Alright, so here's a fun one for you. So as you guys know, I've been making uh, bifiler coils. And one of my goals is to uh, make a system with bifiler coils. And uh, this actually is a one-shot bifiler coil test. And so, it's a bit hard to see, the lighting isn't great over here, but you can see this coil. It spirals in, then it crosses, then it spirals back out. There's actually two wires coming out of the same direction. And then I can uh, take this wire and just pull it up, cut it, um, you know, tape it over the top of these with tape in between so I don't short anything out, and use it uh, in different configurations of bifiler. But the goal was just to print this in one shot. And I uh, successfully did that. Now the spacing between these are not as uh, tight as I would like them, but this was just a test. It's actually really a bit of a challenge to get the coil winder to actually do that right there. I had to really manipulate things to get it to work, but it did work. So, yeah, that's my first real bifiler test right there. And uh, freaking awesome, it did work. So, 
That's a good start. Lots of tuning to do. All right, well, you know, it's a bit lengthy, it's a bit boring sometimes, but this is research and development, you know, when you, when you just got to try to make this stuff happen and do it the way you want it to happen. It takes time, but slowly but surely, like, freaking awesome. Some of these coils turned out so well, it's just, especially these fine wire ones, it's just mind-boggling that they even work that well. So I would definitely give this a thumbs up. It's working well. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now it's down to the details of the roller, the tool end, um, the precision of the, the laying of the wire, the tape that you use, the type of adhesive that it has, the vacuum bed, the flatness, the pressure. There's so many variables that go into these coils that it's pretty impressive um, that they turn out as well as they do at all. Now I'm using 40 AWG wire as my smallest wire in all of these tests. When I start going the other direction, <clears throat> when I start using like 30 or 26, you know, some bigger size wire like that, the consistency of the diameter is probably um, more accurate and then you can lay the wire down better and the coils would actually turn out a lot better than this as far as like being spaced perfectly because the wire is easier to put it where you want it being bigger. Um, which I haven't experimented, I don't think at all yet, with these new tool ends with the bigger diameter wire. So we're going to have to see what that brings up in the future. Um, I'm going to leave you with just a whole bunch of random footage of <clears throat> the coil winder running so that you can kind of see it running and you can see the different uh, coils that I've made here and you can just kind of get some visuals. So I'll just tag all that onto the end of this video. You don't have to hang around if you don't want to. Um, but if you guys have like actual applications for these type of coils, uh, please do contact me. Maybe we can uh, figure something out to uh, help you, uh, you know, get some coils in your hand. Not a guarantee, but just throwing that out there. Um, you can reach out to me and see where we go. Um, I'd love to be able to like use this uh, for other applications than what I want to use it for. And all of the coils that you see here, almost almost all of them will be sent to my friend who is doing an experiment with them and I will show you what we're trying to do with those or what he's already done and what these coils are going to be used for in future videos. So thanks for watching. God bless you guys. Peace and love. Read the Bible more as always. It's very important. People are very important and uh, you should really uh, hang out with your friends, spend time with your family and just enjoy life a little bit because this type of work that I'm doing is like overwhelming. I need to go take a break. Next, we're going to do software. Let me show you how that all works out. The best I can, anyway. All right. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Alright, this is uh, the smallest wire that I have that I can actually use for this. I have some 56 AWG wire, but yeah, it's a bit tangled and kind of useless and too expensive to use if I even could. Anyway, um, the point is, is this is 47 AWG. It's actually 47 and a half according to my measurements. I took a, a length measurement trying to use a micrometer and all sorts of different ways and determine that it's 47 and a half AWG. Um, I doubt you could even really get in close enough to see what uh, what's going on here. It's pretty darn small. In fact, I mean, if you look, you really can't even see really can't even see the wire going in. But it's attached right there. Some pretty small stuff. Pretty small stuff, let me tell you. It's a pretty decent sized spool, though. Took me a while to get it untangled. The end was tangled up. But it is uh, actually working really well. Only problem being uh, getting the tool path right. But I think it's pretty good right now.
no real errors like my first ones that I tried. Sure takes a long time to run though. Alright, well there it is. That is some ridiculous coil winding. I don't even think I can zoom in enough to even see the wire. It's just that small. You can see it coming out the other side and there, look at it. It's so tiny. I did have some glitches and some errors and all kind of different little things and um, it's really hard to tell what is actually going on. The outside didn't quite lay right. I think I know why. The inside, I think the tape might have peeled up again just a little bit, which is what causes these strange errors, but um, the rest of the thing looks really good. I had a piece of uh, material underneath the uh, the bottom, so that little spot right there, there was something underneath the paper and uh, paper tape. This is a label. So, um, it's just crazy. Crazy! It's insane that that Delta can even produce something so, so well. Anyway. <laughs> Wow. Well, it's almost done. That is really awesome. I mean, that is really, really awesome. Look at that thing spin that circle in there. Wow. How cool is that? That is one really good looking coil, let me tell you. Look how tight that radius is. I think that's 20, it's 10 millimeter. Probably 20 millimeter. That might be 10. Look at it laying it in there. Wow. That thing is moving. He's done! Wow, what a good looking coil. Holy cow. All right, so for now I'm just using tape. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum on and put tape the other directions. I'm leaving the inside wire out. I'm gonna flip it over top the tape once I get it done. I'm gonna use the vacuum to hold it down. Alright, I had some major problems there, but I got them worked out alright, I guess. <laughs> Not the best, but it worked. So I'm going to put a really small couple pieces of tape on that to hold it in place. Okay. 
So the next step, I am just going to basically cut this out. Um, parchment paper peels right off that tape quite nicely. Now you can see the coil is actually bent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it over the edge of the table. Basically try to roll it flat like that. Not bad. Look at that. What a coil. Oh, it's going to stick to everything. Alright, before I get all crazy here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these wires. Actually, I kind of want to leave them long like this. But, I need to cut this coil out. Whoa, watch it now. That broke it there. That's a pretty daggone good looking coil if I've ever seen one. Here's something interesting. Remember how I told you guys the size of my holes in my vacuum bed might cause me issues? If you look, you can actually see every single hole that was on the bed. You see it? See the little circles where it's a bit different than everything else? Honestly, that's kind of bizarre. That is interesting though. Kind of looks like a hurricane if I ever seen one. Pretty cool though. Oh man, look at all that wire. It looks like insanity. The funny part, it's really not that much. <laughs> uh, I just spent the last good while untangling this. So look at this, this is from uh, 1966. H-ML enameled. What's that say on the bottom? Oh, copper. California Fine Wire, Grove City, California. The size is rubbed off. It must have been in pencil or something. But, uh, or maybe it says 1-3. I don't know what it says, but it's really super fine. So the silver stuff you see in here, or the copper colored stuff, is actually bigger than the red colored stuff. This is red spool. This comes from Apex. Same as all the uh, other good stuff that is over here. I've been digging through. I've been using... Uh, um, some of this and this has been getting tangled and then so I switched over I'm gonna be trying this type of wire and this is some super fine stuff I finally got only one wire hanging off and so we can finally just use it as it is it's just like feels like a haircut it's thinner than hair it's insane
Oh boy, that looks like a nice coil. That one is turning out very, very well. A little bit of space, but not much. Yeah, buddy. Awesome.